Welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk, our first episode of 2024. I'm Jonathan Frank. And I'm Shan Stout. Shan, I haven't seen you since last year. <laughs> well, Jonathan, it's great to see you too. But let me say that thankfully the quality of our guests today are better than the quality of your joke. <laughs> now, we're talking today with the winner of season 17 of The Voice. Now, I'm so excited about this because it's, of course, country music sensation, Tennessee Tech alumnus, and one of Cookville's most beloved residents, Jake Boot. Yeah, I was excited to talk with Jake, too. I am a big fan of The Voice. I remember watching him win season 17. I'm a big fan of the latest season and the judges lineup with Reba McIntyre. So I had to ask him about what each of the judges were like in real life. Oh, it was fascinating. You're going to love this interview for those that are listening. And we also asked Jake about his years living in the Dominican Republic, his passion for giving back to the Cookville community, and his future music plan. But first, we're joined today by the director of Tennessee Tech's Counseling Center, Dr. Christina Mick. She's been in the counseling and mental health services field for nearly 30 years, and she's passionate about meeting tech students' mental health needs with the Counseling Center's free confidential services. And uh, Shan, I'm, I'm just going to say this is a timely conversation for me because I find the month of January to be a bit sad. The days are short, the weather's cold, Christmas is over. That seasonal affective disorder is real. Listen, I'm in the same boat as you. January can be a little dreary, even just with the weather. But yeah, that, that post-Christmas blues is a real thing. And she had a lot of wisdom to share. And we got to ask her a few fun rapid fire questions as well. So without further ado, here is our interview with the director of the Tennessee Tech Counseling Center, Dr. Christina Mick. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by Dr. Christina Mick, the director of Tennessee Tech University's Counseling Center. The Counseling Center offers free, confidential counseling services to Tennessee Tech students from a fully staffed team of six licensed counselors. Dr. Mick has nearly 30 years of experience in behavioral and mental health services. She's an approved clinical supervisor, certified prevention specialist, licensed school counselor, certified special education teacher, and licensed professional counselor and mental health service provider. That's a lot of credentials. She holds a doctor of education degree in counselor education and supervision, and she's a veteran of the Tennessee Air National Guard. Dr. Mick is married with two children and is a lifelong resident of Putnam County. Dr. Mick, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here today. Well, Dr. Mick, we have so many questions we want to ask you, but first, we know that the need for mental health services has increased all across the country. You've described it as a, quote, nationwide mental health pandemic. So you could be working anywhere right now. Why Tennessee Tech and why Cookville? Well, I will just sum it up with saying that um, Tennessee Tech is home. Tennessee Tech is home to me. Um, I'm a, a graduate of Upperman High School, um, and I have three degrees from Tennessee Tech. And um, the whole time that I went to college here, my goal was to come back and serve the students here in um, any kind of capacity related to mental health. So I'm very fortunate to be in Cookville. I wouldn't be anywhere else. Now, Dr. Mick, obviously students come to Tennessee Tech to learn, but I know that you would agree that young adults have so much to teach us as well. Now, one of the things that is remarkable to me about students is now they have a willingness to talk more openly about matters of mental health. Um, it reduces the stigma and it's, you know, their willingness to reach out for help in a way that previously, maybe prior generations might have done as freely. Um, I know that was the uh, case with me growing up. I mean, there was a there was a big stigma around mental health. You know, uh, in fact, at the last board of trustees meeting, our student trustee and former SGA president said that she herself had used the counseling center services, which I think was a wonderful thing for her to share so publicly and openly as someone who is a role model to many of the students on the campuses. Um, 
What have you observed about today's students and young adults maybe as a whole? And why do you think they're more willing to open up about the conversation on mental health? Um, what I have witnessed about this generation as a whole um, is that they have a value, a value for mental health, the importance of mental health, and then they value the mental health resources that are available to them. Um, I'm so happy that, you know, we served, you know, 1,043 students last year. They saw the value in the resources uh, on campus for them. And not only do they see the value in that uh, in, in their college years, we want to graduate students that will value that when they graduate and know what, you know, what wellness looks like uh, when they graduate and go into their careers. Now, why are they doing that? Again, I've observed something really fascinating about this generation that, that I'm really proud of for them is that they have a sense of advocacy and they like to advocate for causes such as mental health. They like to advocate for human rights and social justice, which is needed in the world we live in. And I think they do that because of the world they grew up in, um, you know, the pandemic, um, the, the trauma, the natural disasters, the school shootings, all the things that this group grew up with. I think they're advocating for change, and I'm real proud of them for that. Dr. Mick, we interviewed another counselor uh, on this show recently, Emma Crabtree, who is now helping Cookvillian's mental health in a different way as the owner of Glass Tangerine, uh, the local plant shop on Cookville's west side. And she shared with us uh, on this program how COVID-19 really took a toll on counselors because they were helping clients navigate something that they themselves were, you know, were struggling through as well. We were all in it together with the, with the pandemic. What was the pandemic like for you as a counselor? And even today, how do you make time to prioritize your own mental health in between helping so many others in our community? Yes, well, um, when I think about the pandemic and I reflect on that time, um, two words come to my mind, action and opportunity. Our team immediately, you know, that week in March, I think about the tornado and then March. We, uh, the March, I think it was around the 20th, we went into uh, virtual mode, if you will, when we all left campus. We just immediately went into action. We came together as a team, and I believe it was less than a week. Our counseling center was fully virtual, and we were home providing services. So we didn't really have time to think about our own struggle in the moment. It was support the students, help the students, let's go to action. And then once we got settled into that, that mode, uh, we worked just as we worked here at the counseling center in person. We, we did phenomenal, I believe. Uh, looking back. But it also, on a personal note, brought a lot of opportunity. Um, I actually took up bird watching <laughs> during the pandemic. Um, you know, I take my little 15 minute breaks. I would set out, I set out some bird feeders. Uh, I took uh, walks with my dog and then I started gardening. So it was an opportunity for me to reflect on, you know what, I need a little more self-care in my life. So I was able to incorporate that while working virtually at home. Um, my children were at home during that time too. Uh, one was a sophomore and one was a junior. Um, so, you know, in a selfish way, I was happy to be able to work in a home environment with my, my own children, but it was also uh, kind of heartbreaking to watch the struggle that they were going through because I think it impacted them uh, more than it did uh, me personally. Like I said, I had opportunity. I, I got in touch with self-care and then and try to model that for my, my own personal students at home. So it was, um, it was an interesting time. A lot of lessons learned, I would say, going forward from that. Well, Dr. Yeah. Mick, I, I love that you practiced what you preached there. You know, you were, yeah. you were trying to help students. You got, you know, got in the zone and said, we're going to help. We're going to do this. You know, we're hitting the ground running. But also you took a moment to take your own advice and to say, you know, how can I take care of myself? I know I, I during the pandemic, I also was working from home and had a, a background. I was working in healthcare at the time. And I took that time to teach my boys to cook. And mm -hmm. that has been a long-term benefit for me, I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. that was self-care and long-term uh, advantageous reaping what I sowed there. So, But we we really took that time to focus on learning new skills with the mm -hmm. extra time that we had. And that did keep us from focusing on the scary of it all. And I, I think that that does help your mental health. And uh, a lot of senior adults were doing that as well. And, uh, you know, folks that are, how can we help? What can we do? What are the skills that we have? Because, you know, a lot of senior adults could sew at the time. Yes. And, uh, 
So, you know, that was making them feel more useful than ever. And I think helping them. Now, we know that uh, counseling often deals with heavy topics and sometimes very heavy topics. But on this show, we like to have a little fun, too. <laughs> So it's time for a few rapid fire questions. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna tell us the first thing that comes to your mind. All right, question number one, if I was not a counselor, I would be what? Uh, I would be a broadcast journalist. Oh, that was easy. You had that one right at the top. Yeah, of your mind. Maybe that's I, a I, retirement. That was, that's like uh, something I've kind of always wanted to do uh, in the background, but ultimately was led to helping others through mental health and counseling and social work. I love it. Now, favorite spot on Tennessee Tech's campus besides the counseling center? Okay, so of course, Starbucks. I love Starbucks, but I like to get uh, my hot vanilla latte and go sit by Fearless Falls. It's a magical oh, place. Very relaxing. Fantastic. Okay, favorite restaurant? Uh, Nick's. <laughs> Mine too. Favorite yeah. store? Well, I'm current. My current obsession is Buff City Soap. Oh, yes. Their soap is magical. And finally, the age old question brace yourself Ralph's or Big O Donuts? Oh, that's easy. Ralph's. Always <laughs> Ralph's. <laughs> finally, Dr. Mick, we like to end each interview with the same question. And that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Oh, well, Tennessee Tech is a very special place for me. Um, they provided me an education. Um, uh, I grew up on this campus. My dad is retired from Tennessee Tech. Um, so I basically grew up on this campus. So it gave me a, a place of, of sense of home. And then also my son is a college freshman here and he is a, a music education major. Golden Eagle March of Band, go, go, go. So for me, it's uh, a, a sense of giving me a home and uh, a sense of tradition. So like I said, there's nowhere else I'd rather be as Tennessee Tech. Well, Dr. Mick, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. This has been great. Thank you so much. And for our listeners, if you're a Tennessee Tech student, you can find free confidential help from the Counseling Center in room 307 of the Roden University Center. You can also reach them by phone at 931-372-3331 or via email at counsel at tntech.edu. After Hours Crisis Help is also available 24-7 for Tech students through the Eagle Eye After Hours Crisis Hotline at 855-206-8997. Welcome back to College Town Talk. It's the moment we have all been waiting for. We are now joined by Tennessee Tech alumnus, country music sensation, and winner of season 17 of The Voice. You know who I'm about to announce. I don't know how I got the pleasure of doing the opening. Uh, Jonathan really took one for the team here, but it is none other than Cookville's own Jake Hoot. Good morning, Jake. Good morning. Now, you've heard Jake on the top of the country charts with songs like Tennessee Strong, which he released after the 2020 tornadoes that tore through our state, and hits like I Would Have Loved You with Kelly Clarkson and Best Job I Ever Had, and that was an ode to his daughter. So for our listeners, but before all of that, he was a Tennessee Tech Golden Eagle first, singing at open mic nights at the Backdoor Playhouse and Poets Coffee, playing for Tech football team, and earning his degree from the College of Interdisciplinary Studies. Now, Jake is also the winner of Tech's 2020 Outstanding Young Alumnus Award and is a past winner of the College of Interdisciplinary Studies Alumnus of the Year Award and uh, just philanthropist and community engager all around. Jake, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you for having me. I think you left one of my accolades out and that was I held the record for the longest time at the IHOP there for the most pancakes ever eaten, which it was 27. You definitely, so, when I, I'm so sorry. We did not vet you properly. It's, it's okay. It's okay. But, you know, I was just putting that in there. That That's definitely one of my higher achievements, I feel Is like. Is there you know? a trophy for that, or do you just get a stomachache afterwards? You know, it was a major stomachache. And, you know, but that at that time, I was playing football. And so about two hours later, I went to Taco Bell and got more food. But, yeah, that was uh, that was a good time. Now I could probably do about 
four or five pancakes and I'm done for the count. I need a nap. But back then, yeah, I could, I could put it away. Well, we're going to update your profile immediately. <laughs> <laughs> my most sincere apologies. I, I wish I had something cool like that on my resume. <laughs> I tell my, my oldest about it all the time. And she's like, you ate 27. I'm like, honey, those were those were the dark times, you know, that's when, you know, poor college student and you get in and they're like, Hey, you pay this much and you get to eat all you want. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to make it worth it. So okay, challenge accepted. <laughs> now, Jake, you've had great success in country music to put it lightly. You've played the Grand Ole Opry, which uh, that was, amazing multiple times you perform with everyone from of course kelly clarkson to alabama darius rucker you've even performed from the floor of the house of the chamber at the tennessee state capitol which i find a, a real honor there because that is a rare opportunity but the thing about you that i find the most fascinating and that i think everyone loves the most about you you still make time to support your hometown and your alma mater. Now, just over the last year alone, we've seen you perform at the annual Cookville Christmas Tree Lighting, uh, a benefit to the Exceptional Bean, which of course is our local nonprofit coffee shop down the road, providing employment opportunities to our special needs communities. Uh, the opening of the new Trackside Food Truck Park, which of course is here on the west side, and even homecoming events for Tennessee Tech. I mean, you're everywhere. I see you everywhere. Why has supporting the Cookville community and Tennessee Tech been so important to you? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's when I when I moved back to the States back in 2008, um, Cookville on the whole, not only Tennessee Tech, not only you know, people that I went to church with, um, Cookville as a whole, like everybody just kind of, you know, adopted me as family. And I, I had just moved back. My older brother was living about an hour away. Um, and Cookville just kind of became family. Everybody did. And so I think, you know, even more so nowadays, um, it, it's just so important because they've always been family, you know, and what do you do for family? It's, it's not a, a chore to go do something for them. It's like, Hey, anytime y'all need something, you know, I want to be there to, to help. And I think even now, you know, four years removed from the voice, um, people still treat me, um, so well up there and they're so loving and the community is just an incredible community. You know, you talked about the tornado of 2020, um, you know, just the way everybody banded together and came together. That's just such a special community to be a part of. And so, Anything and everything that we can we can come out and help with, we we always try to make time for it and make it a priority. And we just we just love the community. Well, the feeling is reciprocal, to be sure, and we see that every single day here uh, across Putnam County. Uh, Jonathan, what do you have to say? Because I know you're a big fan, same as I am. Oh, I'm definitely a fan, and want to echo everything that Shan said about just our uh, appreciation for everything that you do for Cookville and for Tennessee Tech. Uh, but yeah, we've we've got to talk about your time on The Voice. I'm a big fan of the show. Remember watching your season. Uh, and I'm curious, can you tell us what the judges were really like? So you had Gwen Stefani, John Legend, uh, Blake Shelton, and of course your coach, Kelly Clarkson, that season. Uh, tell us about their personalities. Did they mix it up with the contestants or keep more to themselves? And and how involved are the coaches actually in the development of the contestants as they uh, move through the competition? Yeah. Um, well, first off, all of them are terrible. No, I'm just kidding. No, they're all they're all incredible people. Um, you know, I can't speak as much to John Legend and Gwen because um, I, I didn't have a whole lot of interaction with them. I had a little bit and the little bit I did, they were very sweet. John Legend is one of the sweetest guys I think I've ever met. met. Just very, you know, just calm and um, and very, you know, encouraging. Um, Blake, on the other hand, is... I think crazier off camera than he is on camera. Um, uh, just a really good guy. He's, he's been very instrumental in continuing to support me and, and, and provide really cool opportunities for me to play at his old reds and different things. We did, we did an Opry show together uh, earlier this year. Um, and of course, Kelly Clarkson, I got to work um, extensively to her while I was on the show. And then after the show, um, and she is one of the most genuine people you meet in the business. She she's a businesswoman. She knows exactly what she wants, um, and she is very protective of her people. And so she was very very kind to me while I was on the show. 
they're pretty, you know, we, I, I was telling somebody this the other day, um, you do get some coaching from your actual coaches, right? Um, they, 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 you do something weekly with them. We also had a daily vocal coach that we worked with Trelawney Rose, um, who works with, um, Adam Levine and, and his band and stuff like that. And so, uh, we, we, we worked more with her than we did our actual coaches. Um, but we still worked very closely with our coaches and they give a lot of cool insight and stuff because they're all legends. I mean, they've been doing this a long time. They understand stage presence and performing. Um, and so it was just a really great opportunity, you know, and I think I walked away from it, um, way more confident. I think that was the biggest thing was Kelly was harping on be more confident when you're on stage, you know? And so, um, just a really cool opportunity and there's no doubt who I am today, um, whether it's better or worse is is a lot of things that I learned while I was on the show and just very grateful for it. Now, uh, you've made an obvious impact here in Tennessee and even across the nation, but a lot of our listeners, including myself, are surprised to know that you did much of your growing up in the Dominican Republic. Now, your parents were missionaries, and um, I find this such an amazing, I mean, it must make you a very well-rounded person. My question is, can you tell us what those years were like for you and how did you ultimately get from there to Tennessee? That's a great question. Um, Yeah. So my parents were missionaries when I, right shortly after I was born, um, dad just felt called to be in the ministry. And so we traveled when I was a kid um, all over the United States. And then when I was almost eight, we moved to Haiti first, which is on the same island as the Dominican Republic, um, and lived there for a few months, and then moved over to the Dominican side. And then I think my family lived there almost 15 years. I lived there right at 11 years before I moved back. Um, And Tennessee, you know, I mean, well, first, growing up down there, you want to paint the picture of like, it was this incredible, you know, and it was an incredible way to grow up. But to us, it was just a way to grow up, you know, I mean, to us, it was we were homeschooled and we would get our homework done. And then we were outside playing dominoes, you know, with kids and other people. And that's how we learned the language was playing in the streets with other kids and stuff like that. Um, And inevitably the first words we always learned were cuss words, which, you know, thankfully we had some people come alongside us and help us out. But um, (laughs) it was just, you know, watching mom and dad, I think the most incredible thing that um, I got to witness growing up was watching mom and dad, love on others and watching mom and dad give selflessly to others. Um, and that's what I try to instill in my girls, you know, and it's just a very special way to grow up. Um, but then I, you know, I had always wanted to play college ball. I was six, six, um, about 290 pounds at the time. And I was like, I know I'm big enough to play, but I had never played. And so I moved back to Tennessee cause my older brother was living here at the time. And I went and toured Cumberland, which, um, uh, was really, I mean, it was a great school. The coaching staff there was great, but there was just something about Cookville and Tennessee Tech. And so I, I, I came here and toured it, talked to Coach Brown, um, talked to Coach Sam as well, and uh, it was just a perfect fit. So I walked on the team, and that's how I ended up playing here and going to school. And it, it's, it was an incredible uh, four years of my life. Um, met a lot of friends, a lot of, you know, long-term relationships. And so very grateful for that. I think we're seeing the influence from your parents trickle into the person you have become. It's, it's putting the puzzle pieces together for why you have that servant heart to give back and, and contribute to all of these things in spite of all the things that you've accomplished and, and your career is elevated to a different level and you're still supporting your hometown. So I, I think we can thank mom and dad for that. Absolutely. They're, they're still out there serving people and um, they're just, they're just great examples of, of how, you know, we're supposed to love on other people. So I'm very fortunate to have great parents. Well, I'm, I'm sure they must be very proud uh, as well. Uh, Jake, Shan mentioned in the opener and her first question, some of the incredible success that you've already had, but uh, you know, you're 35 years old. You've got your whole career in front of you. Tell us about what's next on your list. Uh, maybe some of your goals or dreams as an artist. Uh, what is uh, the song you've been wanting to record, the singer that you want to duet with, the the album you want to release? Uh, tell us about some of those future hopes and, and plans. Um, I think, you know, if I'm if I'm just shooting from the hip, you know, as they say, I think my my first goal is, 
to become a Grand Ole Opry member. I've played it, I think, 25 times now. Um, and a still, still a very long way to go. Um, but I think sometime in my career, I would love to be a member. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, we've got some songs. I've kind of shifted a little bit in my my artistry and my songwriting. Um, I've done the honky tonk stuff and we've still got honky tonk songs and, you know, great party songs. Um, and we'll still be putting some of those out. But I've kind of been working on a new project um, that's kind of targeted to to just helping people and it's not it's not beating people over the head with a bible it's not you know shoving whatever kind of you know self-help stuff in your face but it is it's it's you know music is therapy and there's a lot of people who connect with music on different levels it's a language um and so we've been writing a lot of songs here lately that that deal with depression that deal with you know loss that deal with you know people that may never step foot in church but you know, are looking for something, you know, and dealing with hope. And so um, I've been writing a lot with a lot of great people here in Nashville, a lot of big hit songwriters that kind of have that same thought process, you know, and and we, we've kind of been writing a lot of songs for that. So we're working on recording a lot of those right now. Um, you know, dream duets, dream uh, collaborations. Um, one of them is happening. Um, I wrote a song, we were in Colorado and we wrote a song called Come Rest Your Soul. Um, and I reached out to a very quickly, you know, growing in uh, popularity uh, bluegrass group called the Woodbox Heroes. And some of them are old friends of mine. Janae played fiddle for Blake Shelton. Seth played guitar for Jamie and uh, Darren, uh, Daylene Vincent. And so they've kind of put together like a bluegrass super group and so when i wrote come rest your soul i had this idea in mind of it kind of being country grassroots bluegrass kind of crossover song and so i reached out to them and they heard it and we're going to be recording that top of the year and putting it out sometime early next year and so i'm very excited about that um but yeah my goal is just to keep touring um keep playing as much music as i can keep putting out songs that that help people um and just you know doing the dad thing I've, we've got you know, we announced the other day we're having our third little girl. And so just being best dad I can be and um, taking care of them and saving for weddings. I, I'm going to have to pick up a couple extra jobs to just save for weddings for these girls. But um, just very blessed and just excited to see what happens in 2024. Well, that's so timely uh, and interesting to hear you talk about that, that kind of creative direction for your new music, because uh, the other guest on this episode today that we're taping, uh, we just heard from Dr. Christina Mick, the director of the Tennessee Tech Counseling Center. We've been talking about some of those same themes, so I think your music is really going to be uh, a, a help to uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, maybe a lot of tech students, and congratulations especially on the new addition to your family that's on the way. Now, Jake, we like to end each interview with the exact same question, and I'm very curious what your answer is going to be on this one. What is, and you can only choose one, what is one way that Tennessee Tech impacted your life? Oh, that is a great question. I can only pick one. Um, you know, I, I want to say discipline. Um, I think from, you know, I was homeschooled my entire childhood. Um, unfortunately, my first semester at Tech, I kind of added way too much to my workload while also playing football and also learning the, the college way or whatever um, and kind of got my grades in the tank and had Dr. Fry from Interdisciplinary Studies and a couple of my teachers come alongside me and a couple coaches um, and just learned a lot of discipline that, that I thought that I assumed I had, you know, mom and dad raised this right. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. And, you know, being respectful and everything, but I think playing football and learning how, you know, to, to get good grades and stuff like that, the discipline that has kind of carried over it into what I do now, you know, and that's doing the right thing and working really hard when nobody's watching and nobody may understand that what you're doing um, I think that's one of the biggest things that I that I learned and that I very, very much appreciate um, that was kind of taught to me while, while I was at Tech. Um, but yeah, just I love my time there. A lot of great people. And yeah, I'd say probably discipline. I love that. That's uh, we all become professional jugglers at some point in our life, navigating our careers and our family and the thing they call work life balance, which is different for every single person. And and uh, I can see that that would that would be a very useful tool for you in your current <laughs> career. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it was 
it was uh like I said, I, I finished every semester after my first one on the dean's list. But that first semester, it uh, it was an interesting learning experience. And like I said, I mean, tech is just chock full of people that they want you to succeed and they want to help you in whatever way they can. Um, and a lot of those teachers are still there, and they're just you know they continue to kind of just pour into the next generation, which is so cool. But yeah, it's it's a great school. Well, Jake, thank you so much for joining us today on College Town Talk. We are so happy to have you. I'm sure that this has just touched the top layer of our interview. We may have to have you back in the future. Hey, anytime y'all need me, I'll be there. Thank y'all so much for having me. This has been so much fun. It's good catching up with both y'all. And that, that ugly sweater is, is definitely looking good, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. I am off to an ugly sweater party after this interview. Uh, and now I've got the Jay Coot stamp of approval. So I appreciate that. For our listeners, you can find Jay Coot's music on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, and wherever music is streamed. You can also connect with him on his website at jaycoot.com. thank Dr. Christina Mick and Jay Coot for being our guests today on College Town Talk. And thanks to you, our listeners, for tuning in. We are honored to be part of your 2024. If you haven't done so already, take a moment to leave a review, hit that subscribe button, and share with your friends. And we'll meet you back here again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.